Uh, today we continue our um, series of videos around building your own interactive uh, uh, domain specific language. Uh, we've seen how to build a simple REPL in the last session and uh, we'll just move on today with uh, talking about how to build a parser for our interactive, interactive um, DSL. First, first thing first, uh, let's lay out a, um, the, the plan for, uh, for today. With so first of all, picking a domain. Uh, so I decided that it would be good, interesting and not too hard to go for a variation of a, of a game that many are familiar with, which is the game of life, which is a so-called uh, zero player game. We'll try to change that and make, make it so that the user can interact with the state of the of a, of a game of life uh, session by um, changing the status of some of the of the cells in a, in a game of life grid if you're not familiar with what game of life is i invite you to go and check out uh, conway's game of life on wikipedia there's plenty of information you can read about it so now that we have a domain uh, which is mostly representing a grid and cells that are on the grid which might be active or inactive we can go on and define a grammar for our interactive game of life rather than defining the grammar in a formal way because i don't want to um, build uh, any more complexity than we need right now we'll just go for a definition of our grammar by example uh, so there are just a tiny set of comments that the user can enter on the on the REPL or will be able to enter on the REPL. One will display the current state of the system, so which cells are on and which cells are off. The other one will evolve the system for a number of times. Uh, if you're familiar with the game, again, this, this will sound um, fairly straightforward. And then here we introduce a couple of variations that are completely made up uh, for the purpose of this exercise. One will allow us to define a pattern and associate the pattern to uh, a variable in this case variable a and a pattern is going to be a sequence of cells that are off or on depending on the on the character that we uh, that we find in a given position and finally with a set uh, with a set cell value uh, operation we'll be able to uh, change the state of a row of uh, um, of an array of a, of a sequence of cells given the starting cell the coordinate of the starting cell so for example 0 1 and then left arrow a will um, apply the pattern that can be found in in the a variable to the sequence of cells from 0 1 uh, going to the right and we'll let the user uh, go about uh, setting cells value uh, the way they prefer they can either use a variable that they've defined up front or actually just go for a pattern if they just want to uh, set the pattern once and not reuse it later. There are a couple of requirements for our parsers. The first one is trivial. We want to tokenize the user input. So given a set of words or a string, which is what we've seen our REPL actually handles, we want to turn that string into a set of tokens. Not only that, but we also want to parse this set of tokens into a particular data type representing the sort of command or operation that we want that the user wants to perform this is a pretty important aspect of this um, of the definition of our parser because what we're saying is that what we want out of the parsing is not to parse and evaluate an expression like you can see on the on the top row on parse 3 plus 5 but actually just turn the uh, string the in input string into some sort of data type representing the operation. This is so that we are decoupling completely the representation of our of our language from the actual execution and evaluation of, of the statements of our language. So now that we know what we want to achieve, how do we go about um, actually picking uh, the tool for our implementation? There are several options we could we could take. They're all valid with this sort of very simple um, language definition that we've seen so far so because the grammar is quite um, straightforward and there's no uh, recursive uh, um, any recursive behavior uh, in the definition of of our tokens and, and uh, comments uh, any of these uh, four solutions uh, could do 
uh, a custom parser is basically uh, an approach where we uh, rely on the uh, string um, manipulation functionality given by the language uh, we are using to make sense of the string uh, of the input provided by the user some of you might be familiar with regular expressions which are a an overly used potentially <laughs> Very likely um, way of dealing with with strings and strings interpolation uh, and string manipulation. Uh, parser combinators we'll explore a bit further in this session, and parser generators are a way of defining a grammar from uh, from the uh, from the top to the bottom, meaning defining a representation of the grammar as a in in a formal way, then generates a parser that can interpret commands in that uh, in that grammar. Because we'd like to work with something that is composable, extensible, flexible, and testable, I decided to go with parser combinators for this uh, session. This means no disrespect uh, for any of the other options. It's just something that uh, I found pretty interesting and that can get us started very, very quickly. Now, uh, we know how we're going to do this uh, because we know we're going to uh, rely on uh, parser combinators to transform uh, user input into uh, actual data types representing commands. Um, so what I've laid out here is a set of steps we, we want to take in order to be able to interpret all these um, different uh, instructions coming from the user. We have a set of building blocks uh, that define how we should uh, interpret, how we should parse a variable, a pattern and a coordinate and a set of coordinates like 0, 1 or 1, 9. And then we will build on top of these building blocks so that we can uh, parse our commands and finally build a consolidated parser for our uh, for our entire language. We can rely on uh, some existing uh, libraries that are available in uh, uh, in Crystal. One of the most recently updated parser combinator library is called Parsec. Um, so all we have to do is we have to. I'm going to go into coding mode here. We just have to. Uh, define a parsec as a dependency and then say we want it from github and voximity is the uh, user that was kind enough to share their pro their progress with parser combinators so this should do there's another dependency that i'm going to be adding to this project which is one that i um, this, which is to a library that I actually uh, wrote a while ago and this is so that we can use the data class macro which is a way of defining um, very simple classes that are meant to be immutable and only hold uh, some some data we'll see why this is relevant but as a, you know just to, to summarize we'll just rely on data classes so that we can uh, express uh, and define commands in a very succinct way and we have a human readable uh, format whenever we try and print some of these which is relevant because we'll try to embed the parser into the REPL so if I just run shards install here hopefully things will be alright so yeah that's okay so we now have all the dependencies we need and just a, a very quick scroll through the uh, readme for uh, for the parsec library you can see that we can define a parser for a particular keyword in this case cat and then once we define the the parser we can call parse on it um, and pass the user input or whatever sort of input and this will return the string itself if um, if the parser if the parsing was successful otherwise it will return an error a parse error uh, which will tell us where uh, things went wrong the other interesting thing about parser combinators, as I was mentioning, is that they are composable. So for example, if we want the input to be either A or B, we can actually combine the two, com the two operator with an OR uh, operator, which is great. And finally, the other thing I wanted to touch on, and the rest will introduce as we go, is that we can transform the return type of a, um, of a parser so that it actually matches um, a particular data type which is something we are going to be using in this in this session so for example uh, this is the definition of a digit parser that um, will return the digit uh, among the the set of uh, recognized digits but we can also transform the underlying value and turn the the character into an integer in in one go 
uh, which is also super useful. Finally, and this is really the, the last bit, we'll rely on a, a very, very uh, powerful uh, macro where we can actually um, break the input of the, of the user into uh, a sequence of, uh, of um, uh, or input, input to parse and we'll just uh, keep on matching bits of, uh, of the string uh, with, with different parser and every time we match successfully with a parser we pass on uh, to the next one. Uh, this, this allows to build more complex uh, parser in a very uh, straightforward, straightforward session, uh, uh, fashion. For example, in this case, we have a word, then the equal sign, and then another word, and this will capture each single value and allow us to then uh, return it in the format we like. Uh, in mind that every time we return this um, uh, uh, value that we want to uh, parse the, the input stream, uh, string into, we have to wrap that into a parse constant. This is just um, a particular requirement of, of this library and goes back to the definition of uh, monadic parsers. If you're if you're interested in that, there's there's a very interesting article from the 90s that is more or less the foundation for all most of the libraries you will find around around parser combinators. I'll share that in the in the references of these um, of these videos videos later. So let's get into some coding. We're gonna go back into our presentation and just uh, start and do and implement one um, one parser at a time. Hopefully you're, you'll be able to follow along. I'll define a parser CR file inside the uh, lib folder. Now that we have the file, we can actually make a bit more space. And uh, let's, let's uh, literally start from the data types we're interested in. So we know I'm, I'm going to be requiring require uh, parsec and I'll require data class so we can define data classes easily. And also according to the readme of uh, parsec, I'm gonna be including parsec to make a life a bit easier. Uh, let's see if this is fine. If I do parse um, string hello and then I try and parse a string containing hello uh, and then well, maybe also print the string we should see a successful hello if I remove one of the characters and, and break the match then we see we see an error here it was expecting an L and it actually found a no so you can see how the in this particular case the error message is useful enough uh, to to tell us what went wrong in the parsing okay so we seem to have everything to start uh, so the first thing i'll do is i'll define a set of data classing data classes representing the set of commands that can be defined by the user we'll make each one of these a subset a, a subclass of the abstract class command and later on, we'll we'll wrap all these data classes inside a module so that there's no danger of uh, having conflicting names. For the time being, we'll define show as a class. And show is a class with no fields, so um, we'll just go for the shortest possible definition. And let me also remember to inherit from common. We'll then define data class evolve. Evolve takes a an integer. We'll call it iteration or just n that's an in 32 and we want this to inherit from common be running this for a second sorry I forgot the end here okay the compiler is happy uh, we'll define a data class for set var uh, we want set var to uh, have so we could do we could do name of the variable and uh, we could say this is called this is just a string and then we could say and then there's a pattern we could say the pattern is also a string but there's value in so we could do something like this but there's actually value in making sure that uh, as much information as possible related to the relating to the type of the things we're of the values we are we are capturing is done in the uh, parsing uh, step itself so no interpretation, but at least uh, defining what we are um, reading in from from the input. And in this in this spirit, let's actually say that um, the name, for example, of a variable is a var name, and it just captures 
a string so it's just a wrapper for a string it's not a comment it's just an auxiliary type so this is going to be a var name and we'll do the same for pattern so that we can decide later if there's a more useful way of representing patterns that is not just a mere string so we'll say string and this is going to be a pattern okay so we got as far as set var let's now define a data class for the apply uh, the apply object the apply command so the apply command will want a set of coordinate we'll think about the type in a second and then a pattern or a variable we said we want to give the freedom to the user to define uh, to pass either the pattern uh, straight away as a set of uh, dots and asterisks or uh, go for a variable that will be uh, resolved to an actual pattern so I'm just gonna say that pattern can be either a var name or a pattern we will leverage the union types here uh, that are available in uh, in crystal so let's now think about the type of our coordinates because it's just a, a, a pair of uh, of uh, integers we will define this as a tuple of int 32 so just a pair of int 32 i think we should be good and i if i compile everything is fine and now i can for example define i'm going to be putting this apply dot new and pass in a set of coordinate like two one and then a pattern which could be for example var name dot new uh, a and you can see how um, the fact that we relied on um, data classes actually makes it so that when we turn the an instance of that class to string, we actually have a very nice human readable uh, expression um, for us on the on the screen. So that's great. So things seems to seem to work as expected. So we've done the part where we define the data types uh, for our uh, for our parser. It's now time to go and define some building blocks for this.